Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So yes, uh, we were talking about uh, uh, the probabilistic uh, description of uh, turbulent flows, and we have just shown this. Um, uh, we have just shown this uh, momentum equation, and of course, this can be uh, simplified to or, or expanded to the O U J D T plus U I do U J do X I uh, is equal to minus. Uh, mm, this would be dou p dou x j plus um, mu times uh, this part that is so this is the uh, this is the thing uh, which uh, which you have expand of course uh, this is the temporal uh, acceleration this is the convective acceleration this is the pressure gradient and these are the the viscous terms uh, so uh, this is the whole term which contains uh, turbulence which creates turbulence this non linear term but of course then after that it gets coupled with all of these terms and as we will see later that this term is also the most difficult problem uh, that it poses in modeling turbulent flows okay so now to have a probabilistic description of that we will uh, let us consider we have a uh, with the anemometer we are measuring this velocity field at a particular velocity uh, at a particular point in time using this hardware anemometer and uh, we are measuring the velocity u actually so this is say the u mean or something uh, this is say a value of whatever it can be like a um, this mean value is say about 10 meters per second okay and then the velocity is uh, fluctuating like this okay that is typical in a in a turbulent flow uh, it has different scales, but at the same time, it is not random. Okay, now we can define a new variable, which is called the sample space variable, which uh, say that we define this value of this uh, variable as equal to VB. Okay, and then we can say that the we consider an event B. Okay, we consider an event B, which corresponds to B is equivalent to U less than VB. So all the possibilities of this u is being less than vb is uh, captured in the event b okay so then we can calculate the probability of the event b and that is given by p is equal to pb is equal to probability of essentially u being less than vb okay so this u this is also corresponds to u this also uh, v v here is not a different velocity it also corresponds to u it is just called this v is will be essentially generalized with a sample space variable of u okay so u v happens in the probability space whereas u happens in the actual physical space okay in time okay and of course uh, here the probability will be p less than equal to 1 okay now we can define a quantity called a cumulative distribution function or which is in short the acronym of which is cdf and we can define it by capital F V as essentially probability of U less than V. Okay. So, this is the probability and essentially then if we see that the probability of the event B is essentially probability of U being less than V B okay, is essentially F the C D F of F is equal to taking the value V B. Okay. So, this is the thing then. So, this is how you define the cumulative distribution function okay. and then we can uh, go into essentially uh, the probability density function which we call uh, which we define as which we define as F v of the sample space variable is equal to d f v by d v. Okay. So, here f is the cumulative distribution function and the probability distribution function is essentially defined as the derivative of this cumulative distribution function in the sample space variable space. Okay. So, uh, this is the definition of the of the p d f. Okay. 
this is what is called the PDF. So, this is the best definition of the PDF that you can have um, and it essentially represents the probability density of, uh, of this uh, uh, sample space variable essentially lying between V and V plus dV. Okay. So, uh, of course, there are some criteria that is this f v is always greater than or equal to 0 because there can be no probability negative probability density and of course, the my integral of minus to plus minus in minus infinity to plus infinity to infinity f v d v is equal to 1. Okay. And of course, also at f at minus infinity is equal to f at uh, plus infinity and that is, is equal to 0. Right. So, now if you have a, a cumulative distribution function like this. So, say this is this is f v cumulative distribution function and this is the probability density function you will have this is the derivative of this it will look like this. Okay. And then this this is the the probability of and this is the sample space variable v the probability of v happening between v and v plus dv is essentially the uh, the probability density fv okay so um, this is the thing then okay now using uh, these things we can define uh, different uh, uh, things like uh, uh, we can essentially define uh, 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 different uh, statistical quantities which are essentially the mean and the, the different kinds of the mean and the moments uh, uh, different moments of the of the probability distribution function and the first most important thing is the defi essentially defining the mean okay uh, we'll come to these things later Okay, the first we need to understand what is defined by the mean. Mean is essentially the mean or expectation of a random variable u is defined as mean of u essentially minus infinity to plus infinity v times f v dv. Of course, integral minus infinity to plus infinity f v dv is equal to 1. So, v times f v dv. So, when you are taking the moment the first moment uh, with v that is defined as um, uh, the mean. So, the mean of a sample another variable q which is a function of u is can be given by mean of q u is nothing but minus infinity to plus infinity q v times f v d v. Okay. And the fluctuation of q is defined as small u which we represent by this u with a bend in the top is equal to u minus mean u. This angular brackets mean ensemble averaging uh, which we have defined before. Okay. And the variance of u okay. So, this is the thing. All right. Now, using this concepts, we are suited to go into what is Reynolds decomposition. So, by Reynolds decomposition, we essentially decompose velocity or any other variable as such by in this manner that is we define this fluctuating velocity u vector, u fluctuating vector at x at the position vector x vector at time t is equal to capital U vector. Oh, sorry.
is defined as capital U vector at x vector time t minus u vector mean of that at time t. Okay. And then uh, this is the, uh, the Reynolds decomposition is this thing that is this is essentially decomposing the u vector into this manner. Okay. So, now then uh, of course, uh, the continuity equation when there is no density variation becomes divergence of u vector equal to 0. So, then we can write the same thing that is divergence of u vector is nothing but divergence of this is small u. and that must be equal to 0. Okay. So, then it means if you take averaging on both sides of course, averaging commutes with the derivative. So, divergence of mean u is still remains 0. So, then this implies then then this implies that divergence of mean of the divergence of the small u vector is also equal to 0. Okay. So, this is a very important thing that is the divergence of the uh, 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 that is the divergence of the uh, of mean u vector is equal to 0 and of course, the mean of the divergence of the fluctuating velocity is also equal to 0. Okay. So, now we can apply these things into the into the momentum equation at least let us consider the left hand side and also the then the right hand side. Okay. So, the left hand side, so this is the full momentum equation that is this is the left hand side of the momentum equation which is equal to del del x i uh, tau i j and whereas tau i j defined as minus p del i j plus del u i del x j plus del u j del x i. Oh by the way I mean here we had a, yeah, the density is there. So, here also we should have the density. So, this is the dynamic dynamic viscosity. Okay. So, just considering the left hand side if you mean it if you consider the mean of this thing. that is nothing but right so of course uh, if you take this inside you can write this as and this becomes this one. Okay. Now, then the question is that how to decompose this and you can see that then this thing becomes
if we just consider this part only this is nothing but so these are the mean of the fluctuating components Okay. And of course, the mean of the fluctuating component is equal to 0, which can be shown by the fact that if you say u i is equal to mean of u i plus fluctuating u i, if you take the mean for all these things, mean of the mean stays the mean that is u i is equal to mean of u i plus mean of u i prime. So, this, this cancels and this means that u mean of u i is equal to 0. So, by that same token, this also becomes 0 and this becomes 0. So, what you are left with is essentially what you are left with is this thing. That is mean of capital U y capital U j is essentially the mean of U i times mean of U j capital capital plus the mean of U i times U j that is the covariance of the fluctuating components of the velocity. Okay. So, this is what makes things complex. All right. So, now, um, so then this equation becomes like this. We have to introduce some more slides. So, then this equation becomes of course, remember mean averaging commutes with derivatives. So, this quantity is now convected with the mean velocity plus this gradient of the covariance. Okay. So, we can represent this full term as d bar d bar d bar full material derivative, but with bars that is this is now convected with the mean velocity of u j plus this one that is Okay. So, the Reynolds formulation becomes the Reynolds equation becomes d bar j d t u j is equal to nu times del square u j which comes from the viscous stresses minus this term whereas, this is the essentially the spatial gradient of the Reynolds stresses this is covariance of the velocity minus the mean pressure gradient. So, you see that all terms the nonlinear, the linear terms that is uh, this transient this transient term uh, this uh, viscous term even this pressure term these does not create any problems. Okay. These are just averaged, but the problem that comes evolves from this this nonlinear covariance of the velocity uh, fluctuating velocity components and then there the spatial gradients. So, this is what the whole and uh, the, so the you see that the equation becomes essentially unclosed. So, you have an equation of you into have a new variable mean of u j which is uh, everywhere here, but then you have introduced new variables u y u j. So, you need to have additional closures for this thing which cannot be solved on its own. Okay. So, this is called the Reynolds
स्ट्रेस All right. Now, the thing is that the most uh, once we have done this, and then we have uh, posed the problem of turbulence. That why just uh, it's very difficult to re represent turbulence in terms of its statistical uh, 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 moments. That is, if we try to represent this mean uh, of uh, velocity and try to de derive an evolution equation of that, we are faced with the problem that unclosed term emerges. Okay, and so this is just with velocity. But uh, in turbulence, it's essentially a matter of uh, turbulent kinetic energy, and so we will go on to de define that. Okay, so the kinetic energy. Now we go into kinetic energy. These all these principles will be important to understand the basic features of turbulence. And kinetic energy is particularly important. So, the previous one shows you the basic problem of turbulence, and we will use this kinetic energy concepts to de describe the how the mechanics of turbulence works, how the engine of turbulence works, how it basically converts the large scales to essentially the small scales. Before this small scale turbulent kinetic energy will be essentially dissipated into thermal energy by the, by the viscous action okay, of uh, the small scale stresses. So, the kinetic energy of a fluid per unit mass is E is equal to half. We can define kinetic energy in various ways, so it is important to pay attention. Okay. The mean of kinetic energy is essentially equal to once again we can just take the average of this and you will see again uh, uh, there will be a Reynolds decomposition. So, essentially we can write it as the kinetic energy of the mean flow which is this E bar plus uh, K that is the turbulent kinetic energy. Okay. So, what is this uh, E bar is essentially nothing but kinetic energy of the mean flow is nothing but just like Reynolds decomposition we did. That is a mean velocity times the mean velocity, whereas k. So this is the. This is, this one is, we'll call actually kinetic energy, not to refer it as kinetic energy of me per unit mass. We'll refer, we'll consider unit mass always, and we'll just refer it as kinetic energy. So this quantity is. kinetic energy okay and this is the mean kinetic energy this is this one bar okay this one is the kinetic energy of the mean flow okay and then we have the turbulent kinetic energy which is given by k small k which is k x t is equal to half of u fluctuation dot u fluctuation then averaged okay is equal to we can also represent by okay ui vector dot ui dot ui okay so this is the turbulent kinetic energy okay so, please uh, pay attention to these different kinetic energies. So, this is the mean total kinetic energy that is the E uh, x t is equal to half times u vector dot u vector. Mean kinetic energy is the, is the when you average this mean. So, that mean kinetic energy has basically two components. Uh, uh, kinetic energy of the mean flow and the turbulent kinetic energy. Okay, so, the mean kinetic energy of the mean flow is given by half times u vector dot u vector 
half of u mean u vector dot mean of u vector and then you have the turbulent kinetic energy which is given by half of uh, u vector small u fluctuating vector dot u fluctuating vector which is half of u i wave this is small okay this is small caps so that is this is the small and this is the big so that is the point okay and then of course from the navier stokes equation one can derive an equation for um, one can derive an equation for the different for different kinds of kinetic energies and this is very important though I will not go into the derivation this understanding of this governing equation is uh, very important because um, you will see that uh, this provides you a very important understanding of the fact that where does turbulence essentially originate from okay. So, where does turbulence uh, this turbulence fluctuations come from. So, to understand that we will consider the transport equation of the first of E okay, that is the kinetic energy and that can be de de derived as you will should look into the derivation at Pope's book, but that can be derived at this d e d t which is a full derivative plus the divergence of, uh, of a transport term or a uh, gradient of a transport term actually because this is a scalar equation minus twice nu a s i j times a s i j. Now, S i j times S i j is nothing but the S i j is nothing but the strain rate tensor which is given by half of d u i d x j plus d u j d x i whereas T i is essentially u i times p by greater density minus twice in u u j times S i j. This is a transport term okay, which transports the kinetic energy. Okay. Now, if you average this one gets d bar d bar t d t is essentially I will not go into this, but I want to show you some final uh, result a final form of uh, the turbulent kinetic energy and the mean kinetic energy equation which is very uh, important times mean of u e plus average of this transport term is equal to um, minus of epsilon bar minus epsilon. So, this is once again the mean of uh, the kinetic energy this is a uh, different uh, u times e and this is uh, once again average of the transport term whereas the transport term is given by this. Okay, so, this is essentially the transport and this is the strain rate or the strain rate tensor. Okay. Now, this is very important because here these are essentially the dissipations. Okay. So, this is E bar is essentially the dissipation rate of the mean flow or the dissipation of the mean strains S i j times S i j bar. Okay. Whereas, S i j bar is nothing but the average strain half of d u i d x j plus d d x i of d u j that is this is the average okay whereas this is the mean dissipation rate of the or this is the dissipation rate of the mean uh, uh, energy essentially uh, of the mean kinetic energy and this will be the mean dissipation rate of the turbulent kinetic energy which is given by twice new average of S i j times S i j. Okay. Now, please pay attention to in particular to this term this is very important and will be useful throughout. So, wherever we will talk about dissipation rate we will essentially mean this, this dissipation rate that is the dissipation rate of the turbulent kinetic energy. Now, how this becomes the dissipation rate of the turbulent kinetic energy will, will come in the next slide. Whereas, this S i j fluctuating S i j is this is the fluctuating strain rate tensor is essentially S i j minus mean of is equal to half okay well, let us write this down little clearly. Okay. 
So, this is the fluctuating strain rate tensor. All right. So, next we go on to the transport equation of the kinetic energy of the mean flow. Okay. So, we can show that. So, this is we will write down the transport even if you do not uh, really pay attention or understand the previous just uh, this mean uh, of this evolution equation of the mean uh, of the of the inner of the kinetic energy of the evolution equation of the mean kinetic energy. Please pay attention to this to this this uh, whole slide this is very very important. Okay. So, we will write down the transport equation for E bar and K whereas E bar is the whereas E bar if you remember is equal to half of the mean uh, half of the average velocity dot average velocity vector and k is the half of fluctuating velocity vectors averaged after their dot products because individually they will be 0. Okay. So, if they write down the transport equation for these two things we get So, d bar this is the average this is the convective derivative where the convection is done by the average uh, uh, velocity. This d bar d bar t material derivative average uh, convective derivative of e bar that is of the kinetic energy of the mean flow plus the divergence of the t bar that is the transport is equal to minus p minus epsilon. I will show what we are now and also by subtracting this you can get from the Rand's equation essentially. So, this can be obtained from Rand's equations and subtracting Reynolds equation from Navier Stokes and then multiplying with u j one gets d bar k d t that is the same convective derivative of k, but the, con but, the, but, the, but the convective velocity is average velocity plus divergence of t fluctuating is equal to p minus epsilon. So, what are this p minus epsilon? This p and epsilon, this epsilon as you have seen is epsilon is nothing but epsilon is nothing but twice nu. Um, fluctuating strain rate tensor okay. and whereas this epsilon bar is nothing but twice nu s i j bar and s i j bar whereas this mean strain rate ten, mean strain rate times mean strain rate. Okay. And so, this, pro, this is essentially the production term what is production, but before going into that you see that in this set of equations okay. in these set of equations these have very similar quantities in them. Of course, this is d bar d bar is there d bar d bar is there if you just compare these two this equation and this equation. Okay. You see this is there of course, but this is an equation of transport equation this is the transport equation for e bar that is the, this is the transport equation of the kinetic energy of the mean flow. This is the transport equation of the turbulent kinetic energy. This is the kinetic energy of the mean flow this is the turbulent kinetic energy. right? and then both have transport terms transport terms I will come to this later, but you see here the p appears minus. Okay. So, whereas in this case the p appears plus all right. So, if this p is actually always mostly always a positive quantity. So, the thing is that what serves as a sink 
P this minus of P serves as a sink in this kind transport equation for the kinetic energy of the mean flow and this serves as a source. So, production serves as a source in the transport equation for the turbulent kinetic energy. So, what serves as a sink in the first equation this equation serves as a source in equation 2. Okay. So, what is this thing that is serving as a sink and serving as a source? So, let us look into this. This production term is very interesting. It is essentially minus u i times u j fluctuating okay, covariance of that Reynolds stress times dou d d partial derivative of u i. This is the mean velocity gradient. Okay. So, essentially, so now you see what? So, this serves this quantity serves as a sink in the first equation and it serves as a source in the second equation. So, what is this thing? It is of course, has got Reynolds stresses and it is mainly the mean velocity gradient. So, this so basically this thing that the, this is the mechanism of turbulence that this mean velocity gradients is sucking or reducing the turbulent the, the energy of the, the mean energy of the mean flow the kinetic energy of the mean flow is reduced by this term and that is converted into turbulent kinetic energy by the same term. Okay. So, turbulent kinetic energy is essentially produced at the cost of the kinetic energy of the mean flow and this production is happening through the action of the mean velocity gradient or mean shear okay, and, and also the Reynolds stress terms. So, this is the very, very important concept of turbulence. So, any any turbulent flow where you have a velocity gradient that is if it is in contact with some solid body of course, it will develop mean velocity gradient. So, suppose in a pipe flow whereas, because of the uh, no slip boundary condition your velocity you will uh, your your velocity at the uh, at the wall will become will be uh, the tangential velocity at the wall will become 0 whereas, the center line velocity is large. So, that develops a mean velocity gradient. So, as soon as, as, soon as there is a mean velocity gradient that essentially reduces the kinetic energy of the mean flow and it produces turbulent kinetic energy. Okay. So, but for that there has to be a mean velocity gradient okay. and so here this is the mechanism by which turbulent kinetic energy is produced by this production term. So, this is very, very important concept of turbulence. Okay. So, this is how turbulent kinetic energy is produced. It acts as a sink in the transport equation for the kinetic energy for mean velocity. Okay. So, the transport equation for E bar capital E bar which is the uh, uh, kinetic energy of the mean flow this half u i u average dot average dot u average. So, this is acting as a sink uh, for this uh, equation. So, basically this uh, what is happening is that once again to reiterate uh, kinetic energy of the mean flow that is E bar is reduced and it is sucked by this production term and it is acts as a source in for turbulent kinetic energy. So, mean velocity of kinetic energy the mean flow is reduced and turbulent kinetic energy is produced and that is done by this mean velocity gradients d u i d x j d mean u i d x j times the Reynolds stress terms. Okay. And of course, this is the source of the turbulent kinetic energy, but then if there is a source there has to be a sink and that sink is essentially dissipation. Okay. So, uh, this is the full uh, this is the full thing. So, this dissipation is essentially the twice nu times mean of S i j times uh, fluctuating strain rates. So, the fluctuating strain rates are nothing but essentially d uh, half of d u i d x j plus d u j d x i. Okay. So, this is the dissipation. So, the production is happening through the mean velocity gradients and the dissipation is happening through this fluctuating strain rates times the viscosity. Okay. So, now also another thing is that the mean velocity gradients of course, that is the large scale. So, if you have a jet, so the mean velocity gradient is essentially persists over the entire width of the jet. So, this is a large scale phenomena. Okay. So, it is uh, of course, when it is uh, taking away energy from the, uh, uh, the, the kinetic energy the mean flow that is a large scale process because it happens to this one. Okay. But the, the dissipation rate 
this is the turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate which is given by this okay. And this you will see that this happens to this fluctuating strain rates and this fluctuating strain rates are essentially dominant at the small scales. So, this itself tells you why turbulence is essentially produced at the large scale and it is dissipated at the small scales okay. But this is the this whole purpose of this exercise is essentially come at these two equations which shows you clearly how turbulence is essentially produced by taking away that kinetic energy of the mean flow and it is uh, dissipate and it is uh, acts as a source for the turbulent kinetic uh, for the transport equation for the turbulent kinetic energy and then it goes through several processes and then it is dissipated into the uh, into the into as a, as, a, as a thermal energy by this turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate which is epsilon. Okay. So, uh, with this uh, we have developed this basic uh, framework by which uh, the mechanics of turbulence happen, but then this tells you uh, this kinetic energy is taken from the mean flow and it is taken by the velocity gradients and we have just said loosely that it is dissipated at the small scales by this quantity turbulent uh, dissipation rate. But exactly how does this happen? What is the mechanics? And that is a very big mystery and uh, uh, this uh, concept of turbulence and this is essentially the, um, uh, the, the whole uh, uh, thing that we will derive uh, that we will uh, discuss uh, in the next class. So, um, until then thank you very much.